Welcome to Boys Episode 198. We are two away from 200. Man, I was thinking about, I was driving around the other day. I've been having a lot of these where like my days are just, I, I picked a new way to go to work, you know? Uh, and it just, it's soothing. It's, it's off of the highway. You just get right off that interstate. Mm -hmm. You just take a back road. You ever take a back road? I'm a back door, back road man. I always, I'm always taking back roads. Freudian slip. Yeah, so like uh, it's a peaceful ride, and a thought pops in my head, and it's the mortality of the show. And I'm like, oh, we're two more from 200. And I start getting like anxious about it, like 200, that's so many episodes. It's a, you know, it's not a lot by like, you know, like Bro Rogan standards. The dude's been doing like, what, 1,500 episodes? Oh, it's, I think he's almost a 2,000 now. Well, it's like five a week. Yeah. But, you know, for a little show in, the, in, mm -hmm. a, in a backyard in the suburb of Oklahoma City, yeah. not so bad. We've, we've had, you know, we've had a lot of good shows. Yeah. We've had a few okay shows. We may have had like a handful of bad ones. Oh, yeah. You know, I'd like to go through the list maybe off the air and. And uh, maybe rank, do a little ranking. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So maybe I want to open up the show with the question for our listeners. Yeah. What was your favorite episode of Boys? Mm -hmm. That's question one. Question two, what could we do to better serve you? You know, I'm all about change. Mm -hmm. I'm all about shining a light into the darkness, exposing the atrocities <laughs> and the shortcomings of myself. Sure. So... Let us know what your favorite episode was. What could we do different? What could we do better? Fill out, fill out a digital comment card. I'd love. Oh, dude, I'd love that. We'll we'll put up the digital comment card box. Yeah. Um, which those are always weird to me. Like you'd see them at a Long John Silver's. Mm -hmm. uh, my my biological mother worked at a daycare when I was pretty young, so I I went to. I went to mom's work, which was the daycare after school or right. during the summer. Why are you waiting for her to get off work? And they had a comment box for the children. And I always thought that was so weird. I guess yeah. it's cool. Yeah. So it's what like you, anonymous. That's, your, that's who's there all the time. It could be the parents. The parents aren't there from 6 a.m. to 3 p.m. Yeah. You know You know how I knew it was for the children? Hmm. It was low. It was two foot off the ground. It was low, and there was a box of crayons next yeah, to it yeah. to fill it up. You know those classic uh, packs of crayons you'd get at, like, Garfield's yeah, or the, a Mexican the, restaurant? Like, four colors? Yeah. What colors were in there? Green, red, blue. Yellow? Maybe yellow. Maybe yellow? Black. For, like, for shading and outlining. Outlining, yeah. Like, like a fucking five-year-old is shading. <laughs> yeah. What are you doing, little Johnny? Working on my cross-hatching. <laughs> no big deal. But yeah, um, I'd love I'd love some feedback, and you know we'll get we'll get to the email address here in a minute. Mm -hmm. But uh, first, how about we do this? Mm -hmm. We kick off the show that old-fashioned boys way with some advertisements. Boyspodcast.com. It's a hub of all things boys. There you will find links to our Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, as well as that golden donate button. You like what we bring you week after week, show after show for almost two hundred shows? Smash, thrash, bash that golden donate button and send us a few bucks. We'd really appreciate it. Boys is available on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, YouTube, everywhere you can possibly get a podcast. I got a DM the other day asking, where can I find your podcast? Was that and Adam Sandler from They're All Gonna Laugh at You? Yeah, okay. was actually, that's who it was. It was yeah. Adam Sandler. And I said, Adam, baby, go to boyspodcast.com. You can find everything there. And he we said, Thanks, Daddy. Uh, yes, Daddy. Uh, nothing is... Sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, go ahead. But nothing is more cringy than an Adam Sandler impression. Yeah. Like, I, I, I like the Sandman. Yeah. I'm going to say it again. I think I've said it on the show before. Watch his newest stand-up special. It's great. It's like a year old at this it's fantastic. point. fantastic. 100% fresh mm -hmm. on Netflix. I think I said YouTube. It's on Netflix. Probably on YouTube, too. Might be by now. It's a fantastic comedy special. Mm -hmm. It is... Dare I say, trumps most of the comedy specials out now. I totally agree. So, anyways, go on with the advertisements. <laughs> well, while you're on YouTube, when you get done watching that Adam Sandler special, leave a review. Leave a review on iTunes. Subscribe on YouTube. Everywhere you can subscribe. It helps us rise through the ranks. It helps you know what the hell is going on. Email us, boys at boyspodcast.com. We were talking about that digital comment card, mm -hmm. comment box, Whatever we were calling it five minutes ago, my brain is dead. Okay, so you, you, you're saying the Long John Silver's one, and I have a memory of a Long John Silver's comment. It, it had to be Long John Silver's. 
above the wooden comment box, there was a bell that you yes. could ding, right? Taco Bell had that too. It yeah, was that's like, what I'm thinking yeah, of. Yeah, ring the bell if we did well or some cheesy some che- yeah. saying like that, which I always wanted to I always wanted to ring that bell, yeah. but I was never a bell ringer. No, I'm too nervous. What would you do? Ring it and then run out of the store all giddy? <laughs> Ding! It was a good burrito! <laughs> yeah. But let's be honest. You know, I ain't trying to hate on Big Taco Bell. No. I like Taco Bell. Sometimes... It's Johnny Taco. <laughs> seriously, John Bell. <laughs> but, uh, you know, sometimes you get a hankering. Mm-hmm. You get a craving. Yeah. And the only thing that will scratch that itch is shitty Taco Bell. And sometimes it's delicious. I did it the other day. Do back in my old drinking days, you know, because I don't drink anymore. Nope. Ding. Back in the old drinking days, man, you go to the bar. What are you hitting up on the way home? You're hitting up Taco Bell. Or McDonald's, but mostly Taco Bell. Always Taco Bell because you get more bang for your buck because you spend all your money at the bar. You got a maybe a 10 spot left. It's mm-hmm. you and a couple of buddies. Mm-hmm. And you're like, hey, guys, I got this. Give me seven burritos, and it's going to be eight bucks. I know, dude. Ugh, value. Value and quality. But, yeah, email us, boys, at boyspodcast.com. Thank you to our sponsors, Anthem. Anthembrewing.com is the website you're going to go there. You're going to see a whole new face of Anthem. They've rebranded. It looks fresh. It looks hip. It looks cool. It's for the young ones. It's for the kids. It is. It's a very, uh, they did their, their re-logoing, mm-hmm. their, their re-strategizing of their marketing mm-hmm. and everything. Why are you trying for their first I opinion? did. <laughs> I slipped in. <laughs> Dang it. I was even doing the accordion hand. He's been doing that a lot lately. Dude, so much, which, you know, we can get into that later. Sure. There was a rally, a Trump rally in Oklahoma. There was. And boy, howdy, were there some... Uh, there were some moments, mm-hmm. there were some highlights, there were some lowlights, but Yo. we might talk about that later. But yeah, their new branding, Anthem, mm-hmm. looking good, looking fresh, just like their beer. And they are open at their tap room at 908 Southwest 4th Street, right here in the heart of Oklahoma City. Go in, get yourself a beer on tap, take a growler home, take a sixer home. If you don't feel like uh, being in public, I don't, get that shit to go. Go home. And get wasted on your back porch. Drink at home. Drink Just at drink home. at home. Just do it. We've heard, you know, there was a there was a little scare, mm-hmm. a little COVID flare up. We'll talk about that. Okay, we will. We okay, will. We'll get to that later. Fat Bison, fatbison.com. You've heard us say it before. I'm going to say it again. He makes amazing wooden signs and furniture. It's it's craftsmanship at at the highest quality, and it's local. Support local. Uh, always. SupportFatBison.com. Can I jump in real Please quick? Please do. So speaking of Matt Bison from Fat Bison, I got to say, you know, during this COVID time, mm-hmm. during this lockdown or this semi-lockdown that we're in or whatever you want to call it now, right. I uh, I dusted off the old PlayStation 4 and I've been playing a lot more video games as reflected by my conversation on boys lately. We've got our Street Fighter 5. Right. We've got our Call of Duty World War II. We've got our Call of Duty Black Ops 4. And me and old Matt Bison have been throwing down on some Call of Duty. Now, I have a love-hate relationship with Call of Duty. COD, as the kids call it. It's COD. Oh, I, I call Black Ops 4 blops. Pretty cool, huh? <laughs> I I know, you know, I know Call of Duty is known as kind of like a bro game, mm-hmm. you know? But man, if you play the multiplayer and you get past that curve of sucking really bad, yeah. like my first, my first probably... 20, 30 matches of, of, of team death match, you got your kill death ratio, right? Number of kills mm-hmm. slash number of deaths. Yeah. You always want that ratio to be positive, at least a 1.0. More kills than death. Exactly. Yeah. You really want it close to 2.0 so you know you're winning the matches. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, if you get used to dying a lot, and I mean a lot, I think my first 20 games, I was probably like, Four kills, 20 deaths. Ooh. Not good. Not, and not, not fun. Good. Just simply no, not Getting fun. your ass beat. I See, I would have thrown the controller away mm-hmm. at maybe 10 deaths. Mm-hmm. And be like, fuck this game. It's Oh, it's so infuriating, especially mm-hmm. Black Ops, which is my favorite Call of Duty, Black Ops 4. But we kept playing. We mm-hmm. persevered. And now you got Matt on his headset. You got me on my headset. We're fighting the good fight. We're winning. We got the positive KD, and it's so much fun. It's, so you guys play on a team. Yeah, so Team Deathmatch is two teams of six people fighting each other. Okay. And you're on team, so you can't shoot your teammates. But we, we got past the hump. I mean, we, I still have a real shitty game every now and then. In fact, I played a little this morning. It was terrible. <laughs> I was 
I, I was right, right back to square one. A little rusty. Dude, I had to shake the cobwebs off. But point of my story is buy from Fat Bison because Matt plays Call of Duty with me. Isn't that cool? That's pretty cool. All right. He's a cool guy. He, uh, one of the best. Champion Vintage, champion underscore vintage, underscore OKC on Instagram. Give them a follow. Lastly, thank you for the donations and feedback. We appreciate it. As we said before, mm-hmm. fill out that comment card. Email us, boys at boyspodcast.com. Put your physical address in the bottom of the email. We'll send you out some stickers as a way of saying thanks for your time. I would love to hear some feedback on the show. Yeah. Hello. Is there anybody out there? Oh, man. You know what that is? Every time I hear that, I just think of that YouTube video of that dad cover band. Oh, God. Oh, That's bad. one of the best. Oh. I'm a glutton for punishment. I love watching, listening, reading things that I hate. Fails. Oh, man. Yeah. And that's that's one of, mwah, one of the best. The chef's the kiss. It is a chef's kiss. Let's, let's kiss off this show. Yeah. Like, let's suck off this episode. Are you Whoa. ready? <laughs> On with the show. Okay, we're here. And Josh had an interesting morning. Yeah, uh, it's early. This is an early show because uh, I had an experience. I went and got myself tested. I, I did my civic duty. AIDS? COVID. Close. Mm. Mm-hmm. Close. Um, and to be honest, man, I was really nervous about it. So there was a, um, there was a mishap over the weekend. Yeah. Some... some um, some things came to light that there was maybe some positive cases milling about the old Barmuda Triangle area. And I want you to inform our listeners. I mean, I know most people that listen to this, they know you, they know me, they mm-hmm. know Oklahoma. Right, right, right. What, what is the Barmuda Triangle? So it's where it's around the western area, actually class and area over the highway. So you got the High Low, the Speakeasy, and Edna's. It used to be Drunken Fry, those areas. Mm-hmm. So... Because of that, I got super fucking paranoid. Just in case, I went and got a test. Now, here's the cheap ass side of me. No, right? It was a free test. Really? So now, where was this free test? What I did, you have to go online, set your set your uh, uh, an appointment, and it's a drive through at the Walmart parking lot. Right. And my thought, as as I was driving in today, I'm like, I can't find them. Shake my head. I'm like. The Walmart parking lot, what a terrible place to do a COVID test. It's just, I'm not trying to like throw all Walmart shoppers into one category, but I'm going to say probably the majority of Walmart shoppers are anti-maskers. Right, yeah. So I'm, I'm like, oh, fucking shit. So then I get in this line. Uh, some dude who looks like he's in a Halloween costume to like, you know, like an outbreak contagion. Sure. Just like a. Shitty like painters, yeah. Coveralls. The cheap, the cheap like coveralls, and yeah. then like a plastic shield over his face. I have to put my ID and shit up to the window. It's a whole thing. I'm, there's a line. How many cars were in this line? Would you say there's probably six cars in front of me? Okay, and behind me were like three or four. Okay, and I thought it was just gonna be. It's an appointment. You just show up and you do it. But nope, there's a line. And sure enough, the Karen in front of me didn't make an appointment ahead of time. She thought she could just show up, just drive on, just up. drive on up, mm-hmm. and she started like. Me 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 at the test person I'm like sorry you got to so she had to like pull out of this thing and like bare there's barely enough room went through it around all that shit so i made my appointment and started immediately googling coronavirus testing what is it what should i expect now have you not did you not watch any of the videos no i did last night okay and boy did that freak me out <laughs> i was going to say and i i want to make a i want to want to admit something yeah my admittance is I came into the show knowing we were going to talk about this and I was going to fake that I've seen the videos, mm-hmm. but I started one and as soon as that cotton swab or whatever it was, yeah. uh, you know, like when you're a kid and you're like, here comes the airplane, open yeah. up. Like as soon as that thing uh, was was going to the nose, I turned it off. I've never actually seen Dude. how far it is, how deep it is, how uh, how much you mix it up when you're up there. So, so I printed, I printed, you had to print a voucher off so they know who you are. And like as soon as I printed, I was like, well, well I'm here. Let's watch a video. And this fella 
shows you how to do it. Mm-hmm. It's a stick. It looks like a, you know when you get like a, bol- uh, uh, not a balloon, a, uh, a bubble wand? Yes. But without the little circles, it's just the stick okay. going the whole way. How long was the stick? Oh, about yay long. Probably a about foot? About, um, almost a, well. Ten inches? Ten inches. Okay. And you got to stick at least an inch way up in your nose. Mm-hmm. So the way this guy did it, he shoved like half that stick up in there and like, fuck. And he was like crying and stuff. I was like. You were crying? No, like he it was. Ma- Why? He oh, it, on the it video. Make, yeah, it makes you tear up. Gotcha, gotcha. And so this whole time I'm in line, I'm like nervous. I'm super nervous about it. Are your mom sweaty? Knees weak, mom spaghetti, the <laughs> whole nine. So I The whole eight. To, I pull up to this guy. Hey, Mile. I, I pull up. There's two stations. I go to the next station, and this dude would have been like a perfect t-ball coach. He did like a crouch. Like, you know, where you get, you bend over and your arms are on your leg, top of your legs, knees. Like I call that the coach's crouch. The coach's crouch. And he uh, he's like, all right, crack your window just a little bit. And I crack it just enough for him to, like, instruct me how to do it. And I put this thing up my nose. Wait, now you had to administ- administer the Myself. test yourself? So the first station, they give you this, like, biohazard bag with everything in it. And you go to the second station, and he informs you how to open it, how to administer it to yourself. So I take this stick and I put it up my nose and it felt fine. I was like, are you sure that's far enough? Because I didn't feel it didn't hurt or anything. Yeah. I was like, yeah, I just spin it around a couple of times and hold it in there for 15 seconds. And then you pull it out and then you do the other side. And I was now, do you do the other side with the same end of the same stick? end of the swab? So you're putting your boogies from the left yeah. into the right. You're just migrating your boogers. I was so I was telling Diana on the way like before I left, I was like, I'm so worried. Like I, I trim my nose hairs like. I spruced up like I'm getting a BJ. Yeah, you know what exactly. I mean? Like, <laughs> an NJ. So, I, and I did like a flow nays to get all the boogies and stuff out. I was like, well, I don't want to show up and like pull it out. And it's like one of those rock candy on a sticks, just like what? boogies. Yeah. yeah. Or that classic drawing of like the kid picking his nose where it's like an, yeah. a bridge. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, was, I was so nervous that that was going to happen. So then you just put it back. You put it in this little like, looks like a balloon wand thing. Now, was there any, um, when, you, when you did both sides of the nose, was there any um, matter on the no. on the stick clean and i felt pretty good about that okay and then you put it put all that shit in the biohazard bag and then you drop it in a fucking igloo cooler and then you drive off no bo- booger pops for later so i'm going to tell everyone mm. if you're just just go get it man it's it's free in most places it's fine it doesn't it's it, you're in and out mm-hmm. just for peace of mind for yourself sure and Especially if you've gone in public. Like, if you've been in, I did it because I, I bartended a shift at the speakeasy, which I should not have done, but I did. And uh, just being in public around all those people, it made me a little nervous. Mm-hmm. And I figured, why not? Again, if it wasn't free, I probably wouldn't have done it. Sure. Because they're like 60 bucks or so. And okay. Like, See, I don't, I don't even know how much they are. Yeah. I've, I've thought about it, but I have, at the same time, I'm also a big weenie. And, you know, I've taken this. I've taken the whole COVID thing seriously. Like I said, maybe last episode or one or two before that, Mm -hmm. you know, I believe that the truth always lies somewhere in the middle Mm -hmm. of the two extremes. Sure. I'm a, I'm a fence sitter. You know, I'm a real, I'm a backdoor man, but I'm a middle of the road guy. You know what I mean? Wait to see who wins. That's right. (laughs) And uh, then, oh man, I was supporting them all along. The whole time, baby. Rand Paul or whoever, (laughs) you know, what's that other guy's name? Uh, Oh, fuck. What was that guy that ran for president? Johnson? Ralph Nader. Ralph Nader. Oh, boy. Um, but yeah, so I've thought about doing it, but at the same time, I've I've taken this COVID thing yeah. as a whole pretty seriously. I've I've not stepped out too much. I, I wash my hands like crazy. Mm-hmm. I got the hand sanitizer. I wear the mask when I need to. Um, I did, however, I went to Target yesterday. I needed a few uh, provisions. Yeah. Uh, random provisions. A uh, pair of shoelaces. It's always random. What else did you get? So I got a pair of shoelaces. Right. Some insoles. Well, do those those go together? Kind of. Some cough drops. Okay, now we're going to the other. We're going to health. Mm-hmm. Okay. And a Dr. Pepper. Okay. Well, the Dr. Pepper was probably a last minute splurge. It was, it was the old uh, grab it on the way out type deal. Uh, shoelaces. So what happened? Did you break some laces? No, the weirdest thing happened. So this is probably super boring, but I'm going to tell you anyway, since you asked. You were autoerotic asphyxiating and was. that's where it broke. I was. I was tying up my weenie with some <laughs> flat shoelaces and I broke them when I got a boner. No, stupid. <laughs> I <laughs> bought, I recently picked up a pair of uh, motorcycle 
I, I don't want to call them motorcycle boots because then you think of like Harley boots with the ring on the side. Oh, yeah. I got some shoes. Real T2 judgment days. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, I got some shoes mm -hmm. for riding a motorcycle. motorcycle they almost shoes. look like high top vans, but they, they have, do. They have support around the ankle. They have reinforcement on top of the toe for the shifter. How's this? What are the soles like? They're the bottom of the sole is black. Mm -hmm. And then there's just like a white. I mean, is there like. Are they grippy or? Yeah. Okay. A little bit. Well, no, actually they're not. They're kind of like, they look like a waffle on the bottom, kind of like Vans. Okay. Anyways, I, uh, anytime I get a new pair of shoes, like when I got those new shell toes that I'm rocking, every time I wear those shell toes, by the way, somebody's like, I see you with those bright whites on. I'm like, yeah, they're new. They look good for now. Did you get your little, did you get a thing, a cleaning those, what, what it's like, it's a, uh, it's got a little sponge tip and you can clean your shoes with Not it? Not yet, but I know I what you're talking yeah. about. Um, did many a windows at church events with those oh, when yeah. I was young. No, but I got the shoes in the mail, got a really good deal on them. Long story short, I'm going to keep it short here. I took the laces out because I was going to hit it with some water displacement spray. Is that what it's called? Waterproofing spray? Yeah. You know, the shit where it beads up if they get wet. Yeah. So I took the laces Scotch out. Dart. Yeah. Yes, Scotch Guard. I took yeah. the laces out because I wanted to get the tongue, wanted to get them all good. Mm. I rolled each lace around my hand and made little loops out of them, much like this loop right here. Sure. I'm holding in my hand. And I stuffed the loop. When I was done spraying the shoes, I, I put them uh, up to dry, and I stuffed the laces down in the shoes. And the next morning, I wake up, I go check on my shoes, make sure they're dry, because I was thinking about wearing them. Doing a little, you know, do a little do ride. A little whip around. Yeah. I couldn't find the laces anywhere. Dude, it was the weirdest thing. I mean, have you ever done that? Like, you think you know where something's at, and you go to find it, and it's just not there, and you're like, what, did little demons come and steal it in the night? Yeah, and it kind of freaks you out, because, like, I know for a fucking fact I put those shoelaces in that shoe. I know I did, dude. Like, you can ask Kate. Yesterday, I kept saying, I probably said it ten times last night. I just don't know what the hell happened to those laces. Someone broke into the house, skipped getting the stereo and the TV. They're like, I want them fucking shoelaces. Yeah, they're like, no, I don't need that PlayStation. Nope. I don't need that 24 karat gold tiger statue that's about eight feet tall in the living room. I don't need to open that door and go in the room and Scrooge McDuck in piles of money and coins. What I want are those two ninety nine shoelaces. <laughs> I'm here for the 54 inch laces. No, couldn't find them. So I had to buy some new ones. Sure. Long story short. Side note, appendix, if you will, the new laces I got are shorter. So you don't have that big bow. And yeah. Especially they, on a motorcycle, you don't want any extra hanging. No. They no. tie up perfect. They're the greatest laces. I'm so happy with them. But yeah, yeah I couldn't find them. So I got that. Got some cough drops. I think that I might be addicted to cough drops. Yeah. In a day, mm -hmm. I probably eat about 10. Really? 10 a day. For like... Out of necessity, like your throat hurts, or you no, just like the taste? No, I just like the taste of the blue cough drop. Wow, it's weird. It uh, it does do a uh, ice type of yeah, like a vapo rub feeling, yeah. you know? Like I like that. Like shit. when you're rolling, you know, and you put vapo rub on your chest, dude. Just let me rub it all over you. <laughs> it's so <laughs> weird. That was such a druggy voice. Just let me rub it all over you. Man. Hey, why don't you lay down and have some of this vitamin C? You know, if you drink orange juice, it makes you trip enhanced. Oh, boy. Hey, put on your pants. Let me rub a little vapor rub <laughs> on your butt crack. <laughs> on your butt <laughs> crack. Uh, so, so you went to Target. It. Yes. Was it busy? It was very busy. Okay. I went around 1 o'clock yesterday, which would have been a, a Thursday. We're recording this episode a little late this week, so yeah, apologies yeah. for the delay, but we'll get it to you. I go in, and, you know, I've always said Target, especially the one in Edmond, mm -hmm is the land of the MILF. Oh, yeah. Which I know it's silly for a 39-year-old man to say MILF. Some of these MILFs are, like are younger yeah, than yeah. me by 10 years. But I know what is. you mean. It's it's yoga pant moms. Yep. Got, usually got like a ponytail. Yeah. Kind of sometimes remind me of like Angela from The Office. Yeah, Lululemon moms. Yes. A yeah. um, lot of moms in there with, with a couple of kids. Uh, and then some other people. It was a mixed bag. Mm -hmm. But... uh. All the Target employees were wearing masks, mm -hmm. all of them. Well, I go to walk in, and I realize, because I usually carry a, a mask in Your my pocket, pocket. Yeah. and I got there, and I was like, shit, I left my mask at work. So I, I braved the elements with no mask, 
And let me just say this. I mean, I made sure to social distance. Mm -hmm. I didn't get up up in anybody's business. Did it feel weird? Well, it felt weird, but more so the amount of dirty looks that I got. So many. Yeah. And I felt bad because I would have wore a mask. Like, yeah. Again, like I said, truth is in the middle. I do think COVID's a little overblown, but I also don't think we should do nothing. Right. I think it's in the middle. Mm -hmm. It exists. Yeah. You know, clearly, clearly exists. Uh, over 1,200 people or something. There's a lot of people that are dead because of it. So yes, it's real. It's real. You, there's no denying that it's real. Now, the severity is a different thing, blah, blah, blah. And I, I saw your Facebook post about wearing COVID masks. You know, I've seen people online who are very pro-mask, and I've seen a lot of people who are very anti-mask. Yeah. Does it hurt you to wear the mask? No. Should you wear the mask? Probably. Mm-hmm. But, like... I think both extremes are crazy. I think it's in the middle. Like, wear a mask if you go to fucking Walmart. If you're Just going do public, it for yeah. now. You don't have to wear it. If you're on your front porch watering your plants, right. you're fine. Uh, don't uh, Your car is kind of point. I've seen people drive around wearing them in, a, in the car. A mask in the car is pretty cringy. It's weird. It's like, bro, you're by yourself. But, I mean, I like when I go to the I go to the grocery store like once a week, and I get everything we need for the week. Mm-hmm. Or like if I run out of provisions, I need deodorant. Fa- I make sure that I don't just go to get one thing. Like I'll wait until everything's empty, make do with what I got around, and then I'll go get a handful of shit. Because I don't want to – there's no point in going in public multiple times if you don't have to. Keep it light. Keep it light. But, yeah, I've noticed that too. Just so many like anti-maskers. And if you're an anti-masker, I mean – I guess that's your freedom to be an anti-masker, but it's also like just fucking put a mask on. But I do think it's cringy when somebody comments on like an anti-mask post and they're like, what, you want to kill my grandma? Well, let's not be so fucking. Well, on both sides. Right. There's anti-maskers who are like, I saw it, dude. I saw a video that I laughed audibly. It was a a live stream, not a live stream. It was a video taken from um, Southern Florida, uh, like a town hall, like a sen- whatever a hearing, and there's all these anti-mask citizens who are going to this podium, and they're all like quoting the scriptures, and God breathed life and created the human soul. You are stifling the Holy Spirit and call- telling doctors they're killing people because the masks are killing people. It's like no, dude. also crazy, crazy. Totally but you're right, crazy. yeah. It lies somewhere in the middle. Yeah. In the middle is a very large space. Yeah, it's a big bell curve. Yeah. You know? And I think the majority of us are kind of sitting somewhere in that middle. I agree. I would hope so. Yeah. You know? Um, So you got your test. Let's go back to that. You got your test. You put it in the bag, threw Mm -hmm. it in the cooler. What was the protocol for getting your results? He goes, he's like, man, here's a uh, coach crouch. He's like, man, I'm going to be honest with you. It's going to be about 48 hours. We're pretty backed up. Keep getting a lot of tests. And I'm thinking, I'm here, and he talked exactly like that. I'm like, that was a good voice. Is this a, is this a, are you a medical professional with that voice? Yeah. <laughs> Although I would love to have a doctor who just just shot you straight like that. Yeah. Listen, man, look, you came in here. What's wrong? You got a tummy ache? Take, take a gander at that belly. You know? Is this Larry the Cable doctor. What is <laughs> Larry that? The Larry the doctor guy. <laughs> I like it. New, new, new comic uh, uh, character. No, and he's like, takes 48 hours. We'll email you the results. Okay. So you get them via email. Yeah, 48 hours. I'm sure, I'm 99.9% sure that I'm fine. Right. But there's that 0.1% that I just want to make sure. Hey, man, peace of mind is a powerful thing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So now I'm going to be freaking out for two days. Right, <laughs> right. Which, man, that is the worst. You know, I've I've been really lucky. Um, I haven't, like, I have, like, stomach issues, you know, shit like that. But, like, I've never had to go to the hospital mm-hmm. for like anything besides a broken arm when I was a kid. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, in and out procedures. Yeah, yeah. But waiting for results yeah. is the scariest. Especially scariest when it's something thing. That could possibly I mean there is a possibility COVID does kill people. There is a slight possibility that it could kill you. Slight is an understatement. Slight. It is so slight, but hey man. It's a chance. That's what sure. I'm trying to say. You know, ch- e- even if it's point zero one. Well, the big one, like there's a chance. A STD test. That's a scary one. Majority of STDs won't kill you, but they will for the rest of your life. They'll muck up your pee pee for forever, and yeah. you have to wait on those results. And that's a scary couple of days. Yeah, I uh, 
about oh, how, many, how many years ago was it? Five years ago now, I had to get a colonoscopy. I was having some issues. Yeah. And you know, downstairs. I, yeah. Yes. Um, you had to do some uh, renovations in the basement. Uh, yes. <laughs> okay. Oh, yes. Yeah. The basement was bleeding. <laughs> so, you know, I went to the doctor, mm-hmm. uh, went to Dr. Sausage Fingers and got the finger up the butt, you know. So he wasn't courteous. He wasn't a fine southern coach crouching gentleman. No, no. He looks like the penguin, like Danny DeVito's penguin. Oh, boy. But he had real big fingers. And, <laughs> and I'm like, hey, Doc, why are both your hands on my shoulders? <laughs> got got the, the, the exam in the office, and he was like, oh, yeah, you should probably get a colonoscopy. And I was just like, fuck, no. I didn't think I needed one of those till I was 50. Mm-hmm. Well, I got one. And... The day before, you have this whole protocol that you have to follow. You can't eat anything solid. You're going to flush your system out. Mm-hmm. You can't drink anything um, that has a color to it, like mm-hmm. a Pepsi or a red Kool-Aid. So or you're on that water 7-Up diet. Se- yeah, Sprite and 7-Up is okay. But you can't eat anything solid, so you have to, like, if you're hungry, you have to drink chicken broth. Oh. Yeah. Um, can't have, you, I think you could have certain Jellos, but nothing red or blue. Because it comes up, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you have to drink a gallon of water, but it has something in it. I forget what it's called. To make a shit. Yeah. And dude, the prep was horrible. Mm -hmm. I once everything started kicking in, I did not get off the toilet the entire night. It was horrible. Well, I'm sure getting a camera shoved up your butthole isn't great either. Well, let me be honest. I mean, they put you out for it, right? The procedure itself, no big deal. Okay. No big deal at all because you're out. Mm-hmm. They give you some gas. They, sh- they shove a camera up your butthole. Look, Have a little look around. <laughs> make it like you're, they're churning butter in there, you know? <laughs> or like plunging a toilet. Yeah. So, uh, and then you wake up. I had a ride home. My sister actually. Because you're me. still loopy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, dude. I don't even remember getting home. I remember laying on the bed, being nervous. All right, we're going to give you some, I think it, it might have even been an IV drip. Mm-hmm. And then I wake up on my couch later. Like, I don't, rem- my, my sister said I was saying funny stuff in the car and just like nodding off and stuff. But yeah, she got me home, got me on the couch. I wake up like two hours later. I'm just like, oh, what happened? Yeah. And Did, the result, how long would it take for a result on that? Like, uh, it was like two days, 48 hours. And yeah, dude, I was just like, okay, doc. Am I dying? Yeah. Is it cancer? Yeah. What's going on with my butt? Do I have to do this again? Mm-hmm. Everything came back fine. That's good. But dude, the waiting is the hardest part. I mean, Tom Petty said it best. He did. He did. Yeah. So you're going to know in 48 hours. 48 hours. The truth. The truth. What if you don't have COVID, but you tested positive for the antibodies? What does that mean? That means that you have had it. Because oh. you know some people get it and are fine. They might have a dry cough. They right, might right. feel a little sick, but some, most people who get COVID, it doesn't kill them. And some of those people show no symptoms or only very slight symptoms. That, that word we've been hearing a lot, asymptomatic. I love that word. It's a great word. So what, do, what, what would you think? What it, do you do? Like, yeah. it, do, am I a carrier then with the antibodies? Would that mean that I'm uh, risking people? To, I don't know. I don't yeah, know what that means. I'd have to look that up, but I think if you carry the antibody, uh, you know what? I don't want to say anything because I don't know. Yeah. But I think I'm pretty sure that if you have, if you test positive for the antibodies that you have had COVID. At one point. Mm-hmm. Hmm. So we'll see. Keep me updated. Oh, I, want, I definitely will. I want to know. Yeah. Are you going to sleep bad tonight thinking about it or not really? No, I'm trying not to think about it. Like I said, like when I'm going into it, I was 99% sure that I didn't. But once you take a test now, it's out there. You know, like you yeah. can always lie to yourself and say that I'm fine. Yeah, I'm I'll fine. get better. I'll get better. I'll get better. But now yeah, there's a test out there to prove it. And in two days, the yeah. only thing I could do is either not open the email and keep living with my head in the sand. Right. Ah, you got to open that the email. Click of that, open that email. Mm-hmm. Or just check the box, hit delete. But dude, is there nothing better when you do get those results and you open that letter, or you open that email, and it says negative? Yeah. Go. Um, negative. I don't have COVID or syphilis. Or right. a polyp on my butthole. Oh, dude. You know? Yeah. Are you, uh, so you're 38? 38. 
when are you going to get your old prostate checked? I Have you ever had a finger up your ass at the doctor? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. I mean, well, it's been a long time. Mm-hmm. Shouldn't have left you that a dopey to step to. No, I had it done when I was um, I was trying to join the military, and they do like a whole fucking, you got to like duck walk and do all this kind of weird shit. Reach over, grab your toes. They stick the same finger up your butt. Okay. But I was like 19. So yeah, it's been a long time. But they, I keep reading, I keep looking that up like, when should you go get a colonoscopy or whatever? They say 50. 50. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, but I don't know, you know. 60s the new 50s, so we'll see. That's true, <laughs> right? See, yeah, just keep, stay in the dark. Just keep, just keep pushing it back. Um, remember being a kid, trying out for the baseball team, oh, or yeah? playing football, and you had to go get a physical. Oh yeah. Do you remember the allure of the physical? Oh, there was a lot of folklore around the physical too. There was, and mm-hmm. let me say this: I never, I, I took probably four physicals as a child. Mm-hmm. You know, young man playing sports never once did they grab my balls as i heard yeah yeah. turn your head to the right and cough or whatever i never got my ball my little balls touched no and frankly i'm kind of upset about it it. yeah i I remember like a you know a a a snoover a total snoover telling me that um yeah uh so you know you get your paper that tells you what you have to get a physical done you have to go to some medical center hey you know they're gonna put their finger up your butt, right? Yeah, I remember hearing that too. Like, Never happened. No, they, they go and they check your like blood pressure and all that shit. They make sure that you're able to, you know, to stand in right field and yeah, to throw your glove out. up in the air. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You no, know, yeah, it was always scary. And the physical when I had to do that physical for the military is the first time I actually ever had to do a full on one. And I thought the same thing. Well, when I was a kid, the physical wasn't anything. They didn't. They said you did that, but they, they're not really going to do that, are they? Right. And you get in, they're like, oh, no, I'm fully nude, and this old man's hands are cupping my balls, mm-hmm. and turn to the right, cough, turn to the left. Wait, you had to get fully naked? For like pants down. I mean, your shirt's off anyway. Okay. So you got to drop, drop trowel. You're uh-huh. in your boxers. Right. Because it's, just, you know, 2001, so yeah. everyone's wearing boxers. Of course. Cups the balls, bend over, and finger up the butt. I think he even, like, checked it. Like, give it an inspection. Oh, really? Well, yeah, because I had to pass inspection. They slap a sticker on my forehead. <laughs> right. That I passed. Smog inspection yeah. on the butt. But, yeah, it was, it was uncomfortable. And then I didn't even get in. Oh. Physical was fine. Right. But colorblind and deaf in one ear, so no one wanted me. Next. Next. But I want to fight for my country. Yeah. I want to go shoot things and people and get shot It was pre-9-11, so. Mm. Okay. Simpler times. Simpler times. I was just trying to be a fucking helicopter pilot. Yeah. So uh, we put out a little poll Mm -hmm. this week. We did. And we we got to touch on it. We had so much good feedback. I was so, so proud. Oh, yeah. And we asked, what is your favorite summer song? Song that reminds you of summer, a song that you listen to in summer, maybe a song that mentions summer. Yeah. And then also, what is your favorite summer movie? You know, summertime is here. Yeah. It is summer. It's on us. And we're the boys of summer. That is very true. So we we put that out in the in the ether to ask people. And mm-hmm. uh I mean we got a lot of responses. And damn it, I made a cheat sheet and I left it in the house. So I'm just gonna wing it. Okay. Because I made my own. Yeah. You made your own. Yeah. You want to start with ours and then we'll go to the... Let's do that. Okay. I want you to go first because I need to try to okay. remember mine. Well, okay. So we... It was really hard to narrow it down. I mean, I'm just going to go ahead and say right now, any 311 song right. is a summertime jam. Sure. Anything by 311. But I narrowed it down to not 311. Okay. Oh, okay. When, when I think of 311, you know, one of our favorite mm-hmm. bands, I don't think of like a snowy mountaintop. No. I don't think of a snow angel. I think of it's 77 degrees. I'm on a beach. I yes. Have a very fruity drink in my hand. Yeah. I'm high as fuck. Right. You know? And I'm surrounded by my boys. I'm surrounded by Peanut, S.A., Nick Hexum, Tim Mahoney, Chad Sexton. Got it. We're all just hanging out. We're all on those like reclining wooden Adirondacks. Yes. Feet up. Yep. Maybe got a fruity drink in your hand. Oh, man. There's nothing like it. Dude, sing 311 in the summertime outdoors. Oh, it's the best. It's the best. So it's anything best. by 311. But I've got, for music, I've got Lend Still My Sunshine. Anytime I hear that song, it automatically makes me think of summer. My ultimate one 
is Fat Boy Slim's Praise You. I don't know what it is. Maybe because the first time I heard it, it was summer of 1999. And that was on the radio constantly. That's a good choice, man. That that song didn't cross my mind. And I, you know, now that I'm like singing it in my head mm-hmm. as we're talking, I don't get a summer vibe, but I could see it's, how it could it's be. It's just so upbeat and yeah. positive and happy that it's like, just imagine being in a car, windows down, driving around with your best friend. Right. And you're not singing along to it. You're just like vibing. You're just vibing to that song. I'm not a big fat boy slim guy, but that song to me is a summer jam. Yeah. I could see that. And then I have, uh, in the same vein of 311, any song, any West Coast rap from the early 90s, i.e. nothing but a G thing. Yes. What's my name? Gin and Juice. Basically, Doggy Style and Chronic. Let Me Ride. Oh, dude, just anything like, wee, wee, yeah. yeah, that that little keyboard part, that that's little a summertime, part. summertime scent. And like a lot of a lot of the videos are like at cookouts. Oh, like, yeah. Like every, all the friends are like hanging out at cookouts or they got their cars or they're standing in a parking lot. Yeah, they're, the like, they're at a park and there's like they're all like bumping. The cars are jumping. Yeah. And stuff. Oh. I, you know, I miss that, man. Growing up a little dirtbag kid, I remember getting lowrider magazines. Mm-hmm. Like I love lowrider magazines oh, yeah. for two reasons. I love the cars yeah. and I love the babes. So many babes. So many lowrider babes in those magazines. Usually in a thong. Yeah, or one of those like those little one pieces that go just over the nips. The Borat. The Borat. And I'm not, this is not uh, objectifying women. They did it in the 90s, but they, that's who they were selling to. You're not selling lowrider magazines to, I mean, maybe a dad or a woman. You're selling it to a 13-year-old boy. Or, you know, a young man that's into mini trucks. I do like mini trucks. I love a lowered Silverado, you know? Yeah. I, dude, my cousin, Aaron... When I was probably 14 or 15, he, he was probably 18 or 19. He was my, he was like my step cousin. I yeah. met him when I was older and he, I thought he was the coolest. He was tall. He could play basketball. Tall. He could ball. He worked at Taco Bell. In the mall. In mid, I wish. <laughs> oh, I wish. In Midwest City. I thought that was so cool. Yeah, yeah. You know, like my dad would like take me by there to see him at work every now and then if we were in the area and he'd like he'd like load up my tacos real fat. Oh, like yeah. extra sour cream, extra tomatoes, just how I like it. There you go, kid. And he also had oh, he was the first person I knew that had a computer and he was like on like oh, what was it called? B or no. BBS boards, like yeah. old school, like you know, pre pre internet forum. Sure. He was on that stuff. He also had a Sega Genesis, which I thought was awesome because I didn't have one There's yet. There's just a cool cousin over here. Totally cool. But he also drove probably like a 92 or 93 Nissan mini truck. Yeah. He had the Rockford Fosgates in the back behind uh-huh. the seats. He had some fat, like, what do they call them? Spoked or spoked rims? What yeah, kind yeah. of? Dayton's? Dayton's. Dayton's. Yeah. He had some Dayton rims on it. He was, you know... They're, they're always, like, in the middle of being a finished thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. The rims and tires are definitely there. Yes. It's either primered or they haven't quite painted it yet. Mm-hmm. The windows are definitely tinted. Of course. But they tinted it themselves. <laughs> exactly. So there's always that kind of bubble, especially in the back window. There's always a bubble on the tent. Dude, to this day, when I see a tent job and it's, like, purple Mm -hmm. like that purple faded with bubbles in it Mm -hmm. i just want to go pick it off yeah i just want to go let let me do you a favor let me peel this off because remember that tent there's a tent in the the 90s that was that like mirrored tent is like frosted mirror oh yeah you usually see it in like a camaro or some shit like that but that was some folklore too like yeah that's illegal you know which i'm sure it was presidential tent you can't get that presidential tent that's right they called it. There was also that tent that was like rainbow mm-hmm. sparkle. Yeah, Do you remember seeing that? Oh yeah, it's yeah, yeah. pretty rare these days. Mm-hmm. Anyways, I thought he was so cool. Oh yeah, and he's the one that got me in because he had a stack of lowrider magazines in his bedroom, and I would go like when we would go over there, I would just look through them and sit on his bed, his water bed, mm, and look real through cool. Yeah, he was the epitome. I mean. As cool as an 18-year-old pimple-faced dork that works at Taco Bell. Did his be. room have that aroma of teenage boy, like, 
kind of smelled like dirt weed, a little bit like armpit, a lot of like balls. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And you know the smell I'm thinking of. Well, and I think it did it did weird things to my brain because being 13 or 14 mm-hmm. and seeing his living area or his bedroom and then smelling those smells and just being around an older dude mm-hmm. like made me so excited to like get older. Like, I mean, I can't wait till I'm dude, 18. My cousin was the same way. They built a room in the garage for my cousin when he was like 17 or 18. So they retrofitted a room in the garage. Like how uh, you guys had that room for uh, Tervis back in the day. Like that, but it was made a bedroom. And his room, he had like a TV with like a Nintendo in it. Mm-hmm. And fucking uh, weights. Uh, uh, what are those called? Like dumbbells? Like curl, like curling yeah. belts, but the where the bars curve for where you can put your hand. Oh, yeah. So he had that. Oh, okay. and he had, yeah, he had like hand weights and he had those like hand grip things. Oh, yeah. Dude, and he listened to Metallica. Only Metallica. So I'm like, this is, he's a Hesher for sure. Yeah. I'm like, so fucking cool. I can't wait till I'm fucking 16. This is gonna be fucking cool. Yeah. Dude, my, my dad's best friend had a son who was that same kind of guy, Hesher. Mm-hmm. Looked like a young Cliff Burton. Yeah. Had like this, the stereotypical bedroom with like black light posters mm-hmm. with wizards on them and like always listening to Metallica or Slayer. You know, long hair, jean jacket, smoked a little dope, you know. Oh, yeah. And man, I thought he was the coolest. I just wanted to go hang out in his bedroom. Mm-hmm. You know, the allure of like an older kid's bedroom was like so cool when you were a kid. Oh, yeah. And I just aspired to be like him. Because at that time, you had like Aladdin bed sheets on, you know. Yeah. <laughs> like Ninja Turtle Ninja, curtains. Yeah. You're like, ah, no, I got to drop this shit. I got to start buying Hit Parader magazines and put the p- pictures on the wall and all that shit. I was just slapping myself in the face in the bathroom, looking in the mirror, just being like, you're such a nerd. <laughs> you're so stupid. Stop being a nerd. Grow some fucking pubes, all right? So, yeah. So, the, uh, those were my musics, my movies. I have What About Bob, which is probably the all time summer jam. Because it's in the summertime. I can see that. Lake Winnipesaukee. Mm-hmm. I sail. I'm a sailor. Mm-hmm. Ahoy! Wet Hot American Summer. Mm-hmm. And then Ernest Goes to Camp. Oh, one that's of the a first good summer one. movies I ever saw. Yeah, that's a real good one. It's a classic. So for me, I I had, it's funny, mm-hmm. I had three eleven sunset in July. Yep. Just it's it's literally about summer, as a mm-hmm. lot of their songs are. But that one, for some reason, I think it might have tied into that rap thing because it's got that. It's almost a synth like yeah. kind of sound. It's got kind of like, like a hip hop kind of a beat. Yeah. So that one was good. I also had Len steal my sunshine. Mm-hmm classic um the video the audio th- the people in the band they just look like summertime the video of like you're all riding around scooters not vespas just like some fucking chinese knockoff yeah, scooters a cheap ass scooter just riding it around venice beach or wherever the fuck they were mm-hmm. and she's on the back so 90s backwards hat a fucking a shirt <laughs> with like a do you like a gold chain or some shit on oh yeah too? Yeah. And some like wrap around visor sunglasses. Maybe some like Adidas pants. Yeah. You know. That's just total summertime vibe. And that was like their only hit. Yeah. The other the last song I have is Doing Time by Sublime. Ooh. Okay. It even starts with Summertime in the Living's Easy. And there's something about that song. I think it's the sample of like I guess that's a marimba or something yeah, yeah. in there. That song and you know that band it just reminds me of summertime like did brad noel own a shirt i don't think so that dude it was it was always summer for brad noel. yeah all uh, endless summer endless summer and wow. then for movies i had wet hot american summer i mean it's in the title mm-hmm. summer camp mm-hmm. you know makes sense i also had fast times at ridgemont high that's a good summer movie now it, it's it takes place during the school year but right. there's some correlation to summer i think it's it the, ends during the summer it's strictly the phoebe kate's pool scene for me that makes oh, it summertime classic little tits loved love mm-hmm. love those classic little boobs loved oh. them watch that scene over 500 over times yeah. as a boy hi brad oh to this because day i think that movie a dingle. and it was a timeless a film because it it was 80s right Mm -hmm. and you we watched it in the 90s and it was still relevant all those things still happened you still had a crush on your sister's friend who Mm -hmm. swam in the pool you went to the mall with your friends somebody worked at the food court someone worked at the movie theaters like the same it's a relatable forever it's a timeless film plus you got the the classic jeff spicoli i mean if if there was a character that exudes summertime oh it's spicoli dude surfing 
mm-hmm. weed, mm-hmm. bagel in pants, yeah. ordering pizza into the classroom. Now, that's a summer move. I don't think you can wear, at least in our uh, handbook at school, I don't think you can wear like a button-down shirt unbuttoned at school. No. <laughs> like no there, there was a strict no-nipple policy <laughs> at Choctaw High School. Could not show your nips. No-nip policy. I like it. And I had a couple more, but I'm blanking if I, if I remember them as we go. Sure. I'll pull it up, but I want to kick it off with our friend Sean Dooley yeah. via Twitter. He picked up, some people just picked a movie, some people just picked sure. a song, so that's great. But he says, Dazed and Confused. That, yeah. What makes that movie a summer movie for me is it's the last day of school and was it 79, right? 1979? That sounds about right. And it's just like, yeah, it's, by that time, it's already summer. Last day of school, your senior year, it's already fucking summer, dude. You're checked out. The soundtrack was killer. The cars, going to a drive through going to a field party. Summer time. Dude, the cars. Yeah. Totally, totally spot on with that. So we got on, on Facebook, we got a lot. So Ryan Drake said for his goat summer jam is T.I. Live Your Life. I've never heard it, but apparently it's a, it's a jam. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cue it up. I'm going to listen. Thanks, Ryan. Yeah. And we got uh, Brian Percival says California Girls. That's a classic. Yeah, that's a good. We're talking Katy Perry, or are we talking? We're probably talking Beach Boys. Okay, okay. But or maybe uh, uh, what's his name? Fucking uh, Van Halen. Van Halen. Yeah. Uh, and he also says Days Confused for the movie. That's a, that one's a common occurrence. Is Days of Confused? Yeah, you're gonna see some mm-hmm. some patterns here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Keep going, man. I, I'm still trying to pull mine up. Well, uh, our uh, Grady Dickinson also said Summertime, Sublime, Far Side, and uh. A lot of Sandlots. Everyone's seconding Sandlot, the movie, for a summertime jam. Uh, West Chamber says summertime movie Sandlot and MXPX punk rock show. I can see, I can see some like punk rock summer jams for sure. I mean, you got uh, Warp Tour was a mostly a summer festival, mm-hmm. and anything pop punk from the '90s definitely would be a summer jam. Well, I got our gals. Our gals chimed in. I'll start out with mine. Yeah. Oh, Kate Finn says she picked a song. Song called Anchorage by the band Surfer Blood, which let's be honest, Surfer Blood, yeah. pretty summertime band name. Yeah, and I their their jams are all kind of summery vibes. Yeah, too. and and that is a very very good pick. If you haven't heard that song, mm-hmm. put it on, listen to it. It's got like a weird hazy summer vibe to it. I dig this song. And what am I? What did my lady say there on that y- one? Your lady chimed in via Instagram and said, "Movie, Jaws." Yeah. I saw that for the first time a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> I've never seen Jaws. I've seen bits and pieces. I know some of the quotes from it. Yeah. I've never sat down and watched Jaws. It's one of those. Should I? Yes. Okay, it's one okay. of those classic movies that you have to see. And it's one of those movies that I lied about and said that I've seen. And I've never seen it. And I watched it. And man, it's great. It It's very parallel to what's going on right now. All right. If, if Jaws was COVID, that's what's going on. All right. If the disease was a huge shark. Well, because a shark kills someone and the mayor of the town is like, no, 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 we'll re- reopen the beach. It's fine. No. It's all fine. And then it kills more people. Parallels. Parallels. We have Molly Killers on Instagram. She says, for a movie, I would say Wet Hot American Summer. All right, throw another chip in the basket for Wet Hot American Summer. Mm-hmm. It just makes me crave summer, even though I usually hate everything about summer. Ditto. I'm a cold weather boy, to be honest. Yeah. I like I like. Fall and spring, but here in Oklahoma, we don't really get much of either. No, bro. It's either cold or hot as fuck, mm-hmm. and I like the cold. It's getting to where we're not going to get cold. I have a feeling we're going to be San Diego here in the next couple of years. We're just going to be like 80 to like 95 all the time. Yeah, no, no, no summer. No summer. She said picking a song was actually the hardest part of this question, so I'll give you two. My first is more of a classic, Blister in the Sun by Violent Femmes. That's, that's a good a, one. That's a good choice. That's a really good choice. And then she says, for my second, a more modern one, I say, Gives You Hell by the All-American Rejects. I can see that. The video kind of has a summertime vibe. Yeah. Well, they're they're kind of, to me, the Rejects are kind of a summertime oh, band, yeah. you know? I, again, I don't think of uh, snowboarding when I think of All-American Rejects. No, I think of like either surfing or like skateboarding in the neighborhood with your friends with like a lemonade or some shit, you know? I think of like a classic car. Mm-hmm. With the top down, mm-hmm. maybe like a maroon like Corvair or something like yeah. that, you know, like a classic car rolling around, swing, swinging, just getting down with the rejects. Oh, yeah. So we have previous guests, Leonor Ortega Till. 
from Five Iron Frenzy. She says, Cruel Summer by Bananarama. How does that go? Cruel Summer. It's kind of it's kind of emo ish, but it's uh it's I can I can see it. Vapor wavy, I think maybe. I'm not mm. sure. Did Bananarama invent vapor wave? Maybe. Maybe so. And she says also the best driving slow in the Barrio song, Samba Pati by Santana. Santana, some summertime jams. That's some summertime guitar jams right yeah, there. Yeah, that dude's a summertime ripper. Also previous guest, Blake Fisher. And before I say this, go check out his podcast, Finding Emo, wherever you can find podcasts. It's him. It's uh, Chris Monier. And I forgot the other gentleman's name. I apologize. But they go album. They pick an album, and it's uh, emo or pop punk record from the 90s or early 2000s. It's great. Go check that out. He says, Weezer Burnt Jam. With a B, I don't know what that song. Yeah, I could, I could see that. What it's, record is that on? Is that one of the? I think ones it's on the. It's on Maladroit or the Green album. One of the two. Okay. I'm pretty sure. I thought maybe like Island in the Sun. That'd be a That's, summer jam, yeah, right? Uh, summer Island. Okay, just so many, so many. So okay, another song that was a pick by a lot of people. We're just gonna throw this in, but Shanna Paddock, Shanna, Shanna Slow Jams, mm-hmm. friend of the show, Fishing in the Dark, Nitty Gritty Dirt Band. We got a lot of that. Really? That was recurring? Recurring. All right. And it is. It's a country summer jam, and it's the only country song that I know of that's in Drop D. Oh, yeah. So it's kind of like a... I mean, if you like Green Day, you like Drop D, right? Uh, Of course. Dude, Fishing in the Dark is a great choice. Shanna. It starts summertime. Like... Yeah. And it puts you in that vibe. When you hear the song, I can immediately picture fishing and like... A big pond, and like there's like you know some like what are those called? Those are like, like cat cat nine tails yeah. like around you. You got straw hanging out of your mouth. Maybe you're a little buzzed. You got a minna bucket. Yeah. Yeah. And you're just fishing in the dark. I love it. Uh, I don't, did you say okay, Tori already? I don't know. No, no what, what what Tori? Got Again, there. another chip in the bucket. Wet hot American summer, and then she says nothing but a G thing by Dr. Dre. Yes. Uh, just to prove your point there. Yeah. And lastly, we've got, let's see. Ives online presence. He says, "Cop killer by body count." And at first, I was like, "Okay, trolling." But then I was like, "You know, maybe this summer might yeah. be a perfect song of the summer, or any summer." I mean, I saw when I saw that, I was like, "Huh?" And I thought the same thing. And then I was like, "Well, I did see Body Count at Warp Tour, and they did Cop Killer." I saw Body Count at the Mayhem Festival a few years ago, and let me tell you, I was into it. They rip, man. Dude, they were great. They rip hard. I who would have thought Ice T. And like, he did some like belting and screaming. Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He he had a nice commanding stage presence. Mm-hmm. I thought it was cool. So, is, do you have any more? Because I'm out over here. That's pretty much. I mean, we we got some more, but they're all pretty much the same. Everyone's saying kind of the same vibe. Mm-hmm. So everyone's kind of got a uniform. It's a wet, hot American summer. It's Sandlot. It's right. nitty gritty dirt band. Well, listen. I want to say thank you to everybody who gave us feedback. See how fun that is. Yeah. We ask a question or we ask for some feedback. Y'all, y'all. Slam your fingers into your phone screen for 20 seconds, yeah. and we get to read it on the show, and that is what this is all about. There was a lot more. What if we, if we missed something? yours, apologies, but you can go to our boys' page and read all the comments. There's there's a lot of good ones, and a lot of people left playlists on there, too. That's nice. one that we didn't get to get to. So there's a lot of summertime playlists you can check out. Bump them in the car, windows down, put that top down, or for my car, I've got one of those nice uh, you got a sunroof. Moonroof, 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 what, yeah. What's the difference between a sunroof and a moonroof? I think a moonroof only goes to the glass oh. a sunroof you can pop that joker all the way out and stand up like stand tom up and hanks and big yeah and a bottle of champagne around yeah Woo! show your titties show them titties so speaking of songs i have had a yeah. song stuck in my head for the last 72 hours what is it the song boom by flight of the concords yeah now i don't know how it got there that could be a summer jam too. I think it's, it's got a very a island vibe. Yes, it does. It's like reggaeton. Isn't it all made on like a Casio tone keyboard? It's too? on one of those like guitar things yeah. or whatever. But I don't know how it got into my head. Uh-huh. But again, I'm a glutton for punishment. I I heard the song in my head, mm-hmm. and what do I do? I saunter over to YouTube, pull up the video from the show, mm-hmm. and I listen to it. And then I proceed to listen to it. No joke, twenty times. Yeah. Boom, boom. It's so good, dude. And I, I, so I have, I have the first two seasons of Flight of the Concords. Mm-hmm. I think there were three seasons. Yeah. I have the first two. And I thought about dusting them off. You should. Well, I did. I did. I thought about it, then I did it. Okay. <laughs> and I, I put it in, I started it. And you know, it's a pretty low budget show. Mm-hmm. Funny. Yeah. 
I think the humor largely holds up, but it got me to thinking. I was like, man, that was a simpler time. Yeah. And it wasn't that long ago. No, was it 2007? Maybe. Maybe a little before that. Yeah, maybe. Five, yeah. But man, I like like I said, most of the jokes hold up. Some of them, you know, as as culture is changing, yeah. Sometimes you'd be like, "Oh, that probably wouldn't fly in a show now." But it right. wasn't like it was horrible. But the songs French. are what held the held the all that together. Like a lot of the parts in between are just like, eh. yeah. But the songs are all great. Like boom, boom is great. And the other one, so that led me to watching some more. But the other one that stuck in my head is the Mermaid song. Which one? How did that? Mermaids, mean? mermaids. Mermaids. They just say mermaids a bunch, and then they have like a verse or two. Oh, the the one that always gets stuck in my head is Inner City Pressure, which is a great song. Yes, it is. Oh, that's a good one, man. Uh, uh, business Time. Business Time is a classic. Uh, what was the Robots? Yeah, what was that called? Eating Humans. And then there's like Bowie in Space. Bowie in Space. Yeah. yeah. And then there's the, what the Hip Hop Apotamus yeah. r- versus the Rhyme Noceros or something yeah. like that. The, I don't know if I'm gonna make it through both seasons. Sure. I only have so much time on this, on this rock. Yeah, you you sent me a, you sent me the clip. It's like, do you remember this jam? And I laughed out loud because the it just popped in my head. And I said it out loud. I was like, yeah, oh, they're off fancy boom. And I'm finding myself walking around the house and annoying my wife doing that, like she's cooking and I'm I'm in the fridge behind her. Yeah. And I'm like dance like, yeah, oh, they're off fancy boom. You like boom. Kate, w- there was a point where Kate was like, why are you listening to this? Because it's great. Because it's in my head. My favorite part, though, and the part that sticks in my head the most is, you know, the, the, the song starts out with the doom, 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 mm-hmm. doom, doom. And then he's like, oh, I need this guitar mm-hmm. set to mandolin with some drums. And right before the first verse, he goes, hit me now. Yeah, yeah. And I was just going around the house going, hit me now or all a, night. Or when Jermaine goes, fast forward selector. Yes. <laughs> oh, so good, man. Great. I've had a song stuck in my head, cause I and I did the same thing. I just kept repeating it. Over and over and over until I finally last night I had to make my wife watch this performance to just to get it out. Right. It's like a, it follows. Like now it's yours. You you take it. And it's the song "Lady Picture Show" by Stone Temple Pilots. Oh, such a good song. And it's one performance in particular. It's the 1996 David Letterman live performance. He looks fucking amazing. Mm-hmm. They sound perfect. And it makes you realize how fucking great of a band they were. STP, highly rated, but I think they were underrated for how versatile they were. I agree. That Tiny Music record, Summer Jam, that shit came out in the summertime. Mm-hmm. I remember when it came out. The, even the cover looks summery. There's like a girl in a like a swimming cap. Swim, yeah, and yeah. Like in front of a pool with like an alligator and shit. I think there's a beach ball on the cover. Beach perhaps. ball on the cover, too. It's a great... So, yeah, and it's like it's just that per- I ke- was mesmerized by it, and I kept watching it. I was like, "What is it about this fucking performance that's getting me?" So last night I showed Diana, and I was like, "You tell me what it is." Mm-hmm. And we're watching. She goes, "Cause he's handsome as fuck." I'm like, "That's what it is." He that draws you in with his fucking good looks. That was a Wyland in his prime. Yeah, I, you sent me the video. I mm-hmm. watched it. Um, the performance is great. Yeah. Sounds fantastic. You know, they they were such an underrated band. I mean, not that they weren't popular sure. or had some hits, but. Everybody in that band was very good at what they did. Oh, yeah. Like, their bass player is amazing. Their drummer, like, he's very pocket, very good, hard-hitting. Mm-hmm. Hard-hitting. Great drummer. Scott is awesome. Mm-hmm. Like, what a voice, man. Yeah. And boy, did he know how to shoot some heroin. He, yeah, sadly. I, too I, too I went, good. I went down that rabbit hole, too. Uh, Dean DeLeo is probably one of the greatest guitar players in rock and roll. Dude, he has, like, this classic rock style that yeah. is so good. The tripping on a hole in a paper heart guitar uh, solo to this day is one of my favorite guitar solos. It's so like staccato. Uh, yeah. It's so fast. It's so tight. Yeah. Uh, but um, yeah, so I, I went down that rabbit hole and then I kept finding later. It's like, well, I wonder what the last performance he did with them was. Oh, not good. Is it bad? And it, it's bad. And then you go into like his Scott Weiland and the Wildabouts and he gets more frail and like. Yeah. He was looking rough. It, it made me sad. And then, so I'd watch like his last interview where he's just like drugged out and just terrible. And then I go back to that 96 performance. I'm like, dude, you had it right there. You mm-hmm. were clean. You looked great. He might have been, da- he was probably dabbling back then. But Maybe. I mean, dude, that's why I don't do hard drugs, man. That mm-hmm. shit will get you. It ya. will take you out. Yeah. Ugh, so bad. Heroin is not a summertime drug. You know what is a summertime drug? Weed, bruh. Yeah, do a little medicine. A little medicine. I mean, what, am I going to go shoot heroin on the beach? No. Hey, man, you want to go surf? Maybe shoot some heroin? 
No. No, I don't. Dude. I don't want to do that ever again. Mm. <laughs> ever. So, you know, we're talking about like joke. summertime jams and childhood and shit. And uh, it's it's now June, end of June. But I've been hearing a lot, and you've probably been seeing it around. Uh, kids who are graduating this year. It's 2020. It's a classic. I, I graduated in 2000. I remember that being a big deal. Oh, yeah. I remember in sixth grade, we they gave us class of 2000 t-shirts because they knew that was going to be a big deal. It's the millennium. I think 2020 is a big deal. Huge deal. It's it's an even year. It's 2020. Well, 220, 220, baby. 220s, right back to back. Mm-hmm. And I, I started getting, I felt bad for these kids. Like you're graduating high school or college and you have to like graduate over a fucking webcam? Yeah, a Zoom meeting graduation. How sad. <sighs> my heart goes out to those kids, man. My my little one has a birthday next week. Oh. No birthday party. Yeah, my wife's birthday is Sunday, and it's like, I mean, she's 38. She's not going like, to throw a princess party for her, but it's still right. like, you know, you used to like, would have a cookout and invite friends over, maybe go to a bar or something. It's like, no, I'm just going to. Sit yeah. at home. We're doing a series of small get-togethers that mm-hmm. will be socially distanced. Yeah. Again, ten I'm people not, or less. Uh, two people or less. I'm not overdoing it, but mm-hmm. we just would. Ra- I'd rather err on the side of safety. Yeah. Especially with the little spike going on right now and the kind of reemerging. You know, I've said it before. I'm so glad we're in Oklahoma. I feel like we have it easy compared to some bigger cities. But if you look at the places that are spiking now, it's here. <laughs> it's here. Yeah. It's not even in New York anymore. No. It's like all like Midwest to West Coast. Well, that's my thing with like the anti-maskers. They're like, oh, it's just these left wing blah blah blah. I'm like, do you do know the spikes are coming from the South, right? <laughs> like it's Florida, it's Texas, it's all these like Southern states. That's where that shit's happening. Is where we opened up early mm-hmm. and you fucker started going to chilies and red lobster on the beach and shit right that's where it's coming so just maybe hunker back down i'm not saying don't go to your job gotta make your money right go make that dollar but there's no need you don't need the cheddar bay biscuit oh man sometimes you do though you get it to go <laughs> true curbside and then eat it at home they should at red lobster they should call it seaside pickup oh what clever I'm gonna, I'm gonna email johnny lobster and see if maybe i can get a little cheddar for that Cheddar Bay Biscuit. Yep. We're doing <laughs> we're doing a couple of like small mm-hmm. like uh Kate's parents are coming over tomorrow. Maybe just order a pizza, yeah. sit at, sit around outside, distanced of course. But we promise the little one that we'll have a party. Yeah. As soon as the sickness is gone. That's what she calls it. The this, sickness. The sickness. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm not down. Hopefully, I'll know in two days. You will know I'm, that I'm not down with the sickness. You're gonna open the letter and go, ooh. Ah! <laughs> got it um so no yeah i was thinking like these fucking kids man like it means a lot to them to do that uh and now it's just like it's just like they ended school early and there's just there's no progression there was no like that uh, dazing a few things there's no school's out for summer moment yeah. you know can't throwing your books in the air alice cooper you can't cue it up you can't cue it up because it's it's like a it's like a 50 year old man oozing jizz out of his wrinkly old penis. Like that's a visual right there. It's just, uh, and then it's 20. So it's my 20 year reunion. There's like this big thing we were all going to do for it. I've never been to a single reunion. I haven't either. Mine, my 20 was last year. And I, I always had those feelings after high school, went to, you know, went to college, dropped out, went back, got my degree, got a decent job. I was always like, I can't wait for my 20. I'm going to pull up. And I'm going to be cool. And all those girls. Yeah. All of those girls. I thought you were going to go for McConaughey there for a minute. <laughs> all those girls. They're going to be like, ooh, talk about a glow up. Yeah. But it didn't happen. Didn't happen. I'm bummed. Bummed. Yeah, I wasn't going to, uh, you know, not to be prank rock about it, like <laughs> fucking reunions living in the past. But they were going to rent out the skating rink we went to as kids. Like, that would have been fun. Rollerland? Rollerland. Oh, man, that would have been great. But you know, it's COVID. So, eh, missed that one. Maybe the 25th mm-hmm. when I'm like 40. What would I be? 42? 43. 43. Yeah, too old. And once you keep, uh, man, it just, it just keeps going. You can't floss. You can't flex when you're 43. Nobody just likes can't. you when you're 43. That's right. <laughs> all right, man. Well, we got to wrap it up. Oh, thank you all for listening. Appreciate the feedback on the summer thing. We'll do that again with something else soon. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you like this show, just tell a friend. Yeah. Get the word out. We'd love to get some, you know, new ears on the show. Spread it like COVID, you know. Spread it around. That's right. And with that thought, we'll see you next week. Bye.